In this video, I'm going to talk about the top five technical analysis tools you should use in your charting. Stay tuned. Hey, traders, a very warm welcome to you. So I was going to do top 10 favorite technical analysis tools to use in your charting. But you know what? I think that's too many. You could list, I could list 10 for you, but in reality, five is all you need. And there's most of the rest of them are variants of this. So let's get started with it. Okay, number one, in fact, you know what, let's flip to a red. Put my cap on so we don't dry out. So we've got some more for later. Red, moving averages. This is just a very simple way of displaying what's been going on with price. We all get what a moving average is. If you don't, go and check out some of my previous videos. I talked about some of the basics, how it's calculated, how you can use them. But assuming you know what the moving average is, you know the value of it. And the beauty of moving averages, you can go from a very low value, like a five period, a 10 period, all the way up to a long 100, 200 period and adjust what you're trying to see. Are you trying to see the overall trend on a longer term, which case use longer hard time frame moving average? Or do you want to see the explosion, how far, you know, kind of the, the, the angle of the moving average, in which case you're going to use a short five period moving average on a daily is going to show you like a very, very tight to price and give you a good idea visually of what's going on with price. So it, it kind of filters out noise if you like, and that's exactly obviously what the an average does. It's taking you know a group of days and then just giving you one value for those group of days. So it gets rid of the spikes, the lows, and you can see things a lot clearer. And purely, purely from a, a, a strategy perspective, from my perspective, you know, if I'm day trading um, something like the DAX, uh, something like crude oil, something like a stock after earnings, you know, moving average comes into play a lot because it's a way that I can trigger a trade. I can already say, hey, I want to buy this pullback now. I want to wait until I've obviously I've got other criteria before that, but I can then say, okay, once we come back to the moving average, I'm going to look to buy. It's going to be my zone where I, I at least wait until that happens. So it's a very good way of filtering out your trades. You can say, hey, listen, I, I want to get involved in this, but a good way to sort of filter it to say, well, this moving average is a benchmark, moving average is a benchmark. Once price hits it, then I'll look for my long or my short or whatever it may be. So it's very, very useful tool, very broad. Um, there's no smoke and mirrors with it. It purely is um, what it is. So uh, that's, a, that's a very good tool to have. Very basic stuff, but can be very powerful if used if you use right stochastics another one and you know what you could have had our assign here very similar things guys oscillators that are giving us either an overbought or oversold condition um, theoretically speaking now i like these because often and, and i'm okay i'm biased and obviously i call all i can do is give you a, a video based on, on my perspective and you may well disagree let, let me know in the comments below uh, what you think about your favorite technical analysis tools but i like stochastics again because there's one specific setup i like to use a stochastic and you could use equally use an rsi for i like to look for the first oversold condition after a long period of overbought so trending up comes down first oversold again more of a filter than a trigger um more of me saying okay now we're in oversold condition, I look to buy it. But the beauty of stochastics, again, is it's very simple, it's available for everybody, and you can add the flavor you want. So if you're in a range bound market, you know, you again, you can use it and say, well, I'll wait until we just have that overbought condition, we come back over that below that 80 line before I take the short, or whatever it may be, or I use overbought as a target. There's so much flexibility with it, and it makes a lot of sense as well in my mind, in terms of what it's visualizing, what it's showing, and, and how we can implement it with your trading. You know, not a silver bullet, as none of these are, but trading for me is about bringing the boundaries in and then saying, okay, it's creating a set of rules based on, you know, completely free reign, if you like, time frames, exits, all this kind of stuff. If you bring it in and narrow it in, and indicators help you do that. They help you bring it in, at least your target, uh, target entry area. So at least you roughly know where you're going to get involved in it. And even just very something very simple, just we'll move on to the next one in a second. Very simple saying, hey, listen, I'm not going to go long when stochastics are overbought. I'm not going to go short when they're oversold. Something as simple as that. If that just eliminates a small amount of your losing trades, it's valuable. So stochastics or RSI? Personally, I just prefer stochastics very slightly. Um, Personal preference, doesn't really matter, guys. Okay, next one. It's not really a technical analysis tool, but I had to put it on here because I don't want I don't want to be forgotten about. And volume's a big, big thing for me. Obviously, price is the number one thing. Number two thing for me is definitely volume. And obviously, a lot of these are derived, or not specifically those ones, but a lot of indicators are derived from volume and price. But I, I want to put it here because ultimately, you know, if you've got a chart, you know, you've got that lower 
kind of premium space, if you like, the first pace that you're going to put your indicator. You've got your price obviously on top and you're, and you're moving averages or Bollinger's up there. I always want to be having my volume here because I want to see what's happening. I want to see who's involved, how many people are involved, how many people are agreeing, disagreeing. There's so many kind of... Um, insinuations you can get from volume or, or hidden meanings you can get from volume rightly or wrongly but i, I gotta be gotta be one of the um the top ones there definitely to, to confirm breakouts to kind of confirm um that it's a flush to, to just to see that there's more interest in it you know if you've got something after earnings or after something a lot of interest coming or not a lot of interest coming in it just gives you an idea of, of the supply demand, a little bit of a vision, a little bit of an X-ray into the supply demand imbalance shift, potentially. Again, no silver bullet, but it's got to be in there. So not strictly a technical analysis tool, but because it's on the chart, I wanted to include it in there. Um, ADX. This is a handy one for really seeing whether there is a genuine trend. It kind of almost quantifies into a, a numerical value and obviously into a an image on your screen in terms of the indicator whether you've got a histogram or a line or whatever whether something is trending or not so you know for me personally i won't use this as a as, a, as an indicator on its own but i might say to myself okay my adx has got to be indicating that we're in a trend environment then i'm going to look for a pullback to a moving up so it's always it's a nice kind of again a filter that just filters out stuff and the good thing about this kind of thing is that you can use it to screen your stocks you say hey i want to find stuff that's trending or not trending how would you do that normally It'd be like scanning through you can use the adx as a good kind of approximation so it's a good way of filtering through if you're one of the guys who likes to trade a basket of stocks a basket of uh, fx pairs a basket of whatever it may be and you want to filter for things that are trending or not trending depending on your strategy handy little tool adx for for getting involved in that and also um there is a couple of pretty useful strategies resulting straight from ADX that are very similar to kind of buying the first pullback thing. Okay, let's move on to the last one, Fibonacci guys. Um, now, we all know at Fibonacci, uh, if you haven't gone check out some of the previous videos, Fibonacci, especially the retracement, I should have put the retracement there, that's particularly what I like. Again, because if you have a scenario where the market's moved up, you know, you're drawing on your fibs, whatever they are, uh, you get the idea, you're pulling back, a, all the job of all these things is to frame the trade a bit more, a bit better. That's really all you're doing with indicators. You know, rather than just kind of eyeballing it without these retracements on and going, well, I, I kind of want to get involved in it here or I kind of want to get involved in it there. You know, as you would with a moving average, you'll say, well, I want to wait until we've pulled back. You know, I don't want to I don't want to get long if we go under the 50 percent or I want to put, buy it only when we get a very tight pullback whatever it may be. And to be honest with you guys, you know, this is something that I've done before. Let me wipe this off quickly is I've used, even though FIB obviously comes in standard with all the charting packages, there are times when I've had a lot of success and found it better in my mind just to spit the thing into quarters and just say, okay, that's my 20 to 75, that's my 50, you know, it's my 25, that's my 100%. Um, it, it doesn't really matter. You know, I know that there's some FIB guys and you're going to disagree and say, but the FIB numbers in this, in the day, all you're trying to do is structure your trade with boundaries. Whether that happens to be a FIB number there, whether it happens to be a quadrant, whether whatever it may be, you're just saying to yourself, hey, listen, I want to buy a pullback if we're in the upper quarter, upper third, whatever. If we kind of go below the half, the 50% level, I don't want it because the strength's not there. So however you frame it, whether you use a fib, whether you use a quadrant, whatever it may be, just really maybe I should have broadened this out and said, you know, cut some kind of structure like that. But fib, just as good. And obviously it comes with a chart package, so you may as well use it and get to get to understand how that works. But Fibonacci retracement, very good for kind of quantifying the strength of the pullback. Is it a strong pullback? It looks like it might reverse. Is it flagging at highs? You know, if you've got a bull flag, you know, just sitting in the kind of very high type bull flag, again, you can quantify it with your fib. Um, so these things, <clears throat> I guess that I've been a little bit broad with my um, definitions of how I use them but trading is a little bit like that guys there's no real definite way I don't feel that you can say oh I've definitely got to use this on this setting and that setting another setting it might work for a while but you know you, you want to adapt you want to grow as a trader you want to adapt to different market conditions different kind of um, you know time that you can put in all these kind of stuff and so you need to have a broad understanding of the value of each indicator and then adjust it to suit what you're trying to do so 
I think top five ones, moving average, stochastics or an RSI, some sign of oscillator, volume, um, ADX, and then Fibonacci retracement. Really handy. If you haven't traded before, just getting into it, not a bad place to start with these tools. I would definitely not recommend going crazy and adding loads on. By all means, knock off ADX, put on Bollinger Bands or something if, if you prefer that. But a good starting point. Let me know what you think about the uh, top uh, five technical analysis tools below. Agree, disagree, anything in there that you think should be in there, shouldn't be in there. Always interested to see your comments, guys. All right, take care. See you in the next one. Bye-bye.